Hi, hello, when I come and welcome back to another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see how to install JMeter in Windows 11 machine. So let's go to that uh, one by one. So if you're someone who already knows this, uh, you can skip this video. And for those who are very beginner and if you're someone who wants to start your JMeter in your career or if you're someone who wants to kickstart your uh, JMeter journey, you can watch this video. Uh, this is going to be a very first step on how to install JMeter in Windows 11. And before we move on to this video, this is me, Asan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our little slide tip channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And please don't uh, forget to give a like if you like this video. And don't forget to share this with your friend. And please do join uh, my channel for more interesting and informative content. So coming back to the uh, video. So to install, uh, let me go to Google. And opening Google. So I'm going to download Apache JMeter 5.6.3. So this is the latest latest version from uh, from Apache JMeter. So I'm going to click on download Apache JMeter, the very first link. And then here we have several options. So we have binaries and then we have source. And even in binaries, we have .tgz, we have SHA 512, we have PGP versions, we have .zip, and then we have uh, uh, shard 512 and then we have PGP version. So what is the difference? Like which one should I download? Should I go with binaries or should I go with source? So uh, let me explain you what is binaries and what is source. So binary, so these binary packages or whatever you see here, the, the, that dot .tgz or the dot .zip. So these package, I mean, these binary packages contains the compiled and they have the ready to use version of JMeter and it includes the executable files the libraries and all the dependencies which are required to run the JMeter. And this is the version you would download if you simply want to run JMeter without modifying its internal codes. What does this uh, binaries contain? So they contain the JMeter.bat if it is for Windows. And if it is for uh, Linux, it contains the JMeter.sh. So we'll see how to uh, install JMeter in a Ubuntu machine in a separate video. But for now, uh, it contains the JMeter libraries and dependencies. It contains the JMeter plugins and the configuration files and examples. So if you're a typical user who wants to install and run JMeter to create and execute performance tests, you should download the binaries version. So a tick for the binaries for those who want to use the ready to use JMeter. And what is the source? So, so let's understand what is the source before we move uh, to download this. So source contains uh, the source package contains the raw source code of JMeter, which is written in Java, and you would need to compile this source code to create your own version of JMeter. And this is for developers who want to modify or extend JMeter by working directly with its source code. And what does this contain? So this contains the JMeter's Java source code. It contains the build scripts. Uh, for example, it can be Apache Maven, or it can be ant files to compile JMeter from source and also the documentation on how to build the JMeter. And if you are a developer who wants to contribute to JMeter's development, or if you need to make custom changes to its core functionality, you can download the source version. So yeah, so that's, a, that's it. So if you're someone who wants to test, you can go with the binary. So if you're someone who wants to develop and you want to contribute to J J JMeter, you can so download from the source. So for now, we're going to test. So our path is testing. So I'm going to download the Apache JMeter 5.6.3.zip and that's for the Windows machine. So here you can see uh, the download has started at the top right and it uh, it is around like 50 MB, 50 to 80 MB of data. Yeah, it's around 86 MB of data and it's it's a very lightweight application, but still it would take a lot of CPU and memory when we are running it, but still the content of the file is very less. It's like just around 86 MB and you do uh, the next step. Yeah, uh, coming back to this installation. So I will tell you how uh, the installation part works. Let's wait for a few more seconds and yep, we are done. So let me open the file and let me extract it. So let me extract all, extract. So it's taking a few seconds uh, for downloading. So since it's like 80, for MB of data, it'll, it would be expanded to like some few more MB of data. And then once it's expanded, then we'll move on to the C drive. And from there, we'll start running this files. Yep, so now we I have got 
the Apache Jmeter extracted. And inside this folder here, you can see the Apache Jmeter 563. I'm going to cut it. And then going to the C drive. And then I'm just going to use the Vasant folder. So since I already have a folder here, what I'm going to do is let me just create, or I'll just, uh, yeah, let me just create a new folder. Or I can, let me just create a new folder to avoid any confusion. So it's going to be Jmeter. And then I'm going to, create uh, I just go to copy the file and I'm going to open this one and under the bin so yeah this is what you can tell like I told you uh, earlier it contains the library files so inside the library file you have the jar files all the compiled jar files and you have the JUnit files that you read me dot txt and then you have the extension file so again it's a set of another set of jar files so if you're someone who uh, you downloads the plugins uh, you know how it works uh, and then we have the extras where it contains uh, some extra files. We'll see this one by one like in our next videos and uh, you have the docs. So where you can see the supported files. So that's a very less use. And then you have the licenses. So you have like lots of licenses here and then printable documents. So these are like something through uh, the demos or the user manual. So the most important one is the bin folder. So just open your bin folder and inside the bin folder, you can find the jmeter.bat. So here you can see the jmeter.bat. And, and one more thing, like I, I have even taken uh, several videos on this, like how to create the jmeter root certificate. So here, so far you don't see the jmeter root certificate. So let me just double click and open it. So when I double click and open it, you can see uh, the uh, Jmeter, the, the first window it's, it's getting open. And let me tell you what exactly is it doing. So if I click the file and when I click on edit in notepad, uh, jmeter.bat, yep, this is what I want. So let me just close up the other files. Okay, for now, this is not important. Uh, let me go to this one. So this is what it does. So uh, yeah, again, uh, the JMeter is opened here, but uh, let me give you a quick understanding on what this JMeter.bat does, right? So yeah, coming to the very first set. And so we are going to see about this particular set now. I mean, like, you should understand what you are doing before you even know how to use the JMeter. So this is how uh, you have installed. I mean, like you, you can successfully see your JMeter, but again, let me tell you what exactly is this telling you. So it actually involves the first set of the file involves the license notice. So this script is licensed under the Apache license version 2.0 which uh, permits use and modification under certain terms without warranties. So the full license can be found at the provided URL here. This is the complete URL for you to find the license. And then you have the environment variables, right? That can be defined externally. So the script allows the users and us to define certain environment variables externally through a separate set env.bat, this one here. So custom configurations don't modify this main script. And these are some of the very important variables, the key variables, I would say. So the T draw, uh, it's an it's a JVM option for direct draw graphic settings. So you can see several graphics options. So this D draw is taking care of it. And then you have the JMeter bin, which is the path to the JMeter bin directory. And then you have the JMeter complete args, which is which signals to exclusively using JVM arguments. So we all know about the heap and the garbage collection. So this particular part takes care of it. And then the uh, JMeter home, which is the installation directory. And uh, it's auto uh, guessed if not set. And then you have the JM launch, the java.exe. So this specifies whether to launch java.exe or java.w.exe. And then you have the JWS, JM start. So this launch JMeter in a separate window. And then you have the JVM arcs, so right? So this optional JVM options for starting the JMeter, which is like it defaults to the language settings. So in case if you want to start with the different language settings, you can start, like we all know, like most of us know, like people across the world uses different uh, languages like Spain, Spanish or English or Chinese. So there are like different languages, right? So, the, but the most common is the English one. So that's the reason we are using, we are opening it in English. 
So if someone who wants to open a different language, you can just change this particular part and then you can uh, open it in a different language. In fact, we'll see that in a separate video, like how to change the language and open it for a different uh, region, of, uh, region in the world. And then we have the GC algorithm where we take care of the Java garbage collector settings where, uh, in fact, I have even discussed about this in one of the video, like how to increase uh, this particular GC and the heap settings to increase the capacity of JMeter to run more user load more user uh, in the using jmeter right so we can you can see that as well in a separate video but for now uh, we can increase the maximum gc passing milliseconds and then you can um, uh, even increase the gc reserve percent so uh, these two particular thing that is the uh, java uh, sorry the jvm garbage collector option so this actually refers to optional parameters actually they are like optional like it's mentioned here uh, that control how the JVM manages garbage collection. So garbage collection, you know, which is a process that automatically frees up memory by reclaiming unused objects during program execution. So the efficient garbage collection is critical in performance testing tools like JMeter because poorly managed memory can cause test to slow down and crash, right? So that's the reason GC is very important. And coming back to this part here, um, the GC1 GC, the very first part. So this is garbage first garbage collector. So this is designed for low latency and high throughput applications. So if you're someone who wants to test a low latency and high throughput applications, high throughput, you mean, I mean, when you're giving more number of hits. So this splits the heap into regions and works incrementally to avoid large passes that can occur in other GC uh, garbage collection algorithms. So why GC1 GC? So it is a great fit for applications, like I told you, with great larger heap sizes like JMeter during heavy load tests because it tries to meet user-defined pass time goals while maintaining good throughput. And then the second part, which is max GC pass millis equal to 100. So this parameter sets the maximum pass time target for garbage collection to 100 milliseconds, which is like one tenth of a second. Essentially, this means the JVM will try to keep passes during garbage collection under 100 milliseconds. And if GC takes longer, the JVM will adjust its collection strategy to meet this target. So why this 100? In performance testing, responsiveness is a key, which we all know that that's what we are struggling to improve, right? So a shorter pause time means a smoother execution and more accurate test results, particularly when JMeter is generating a lot of load. So you can, you can just play with it in case if you have this time, if you can just play with increasing and decreasing the milliseconds and you can try it. And then the last one in the garbage collection, which is the G1 reserve percent. So this option tells the garbage, the G1 garbage collector to reserve 20% of the heap for empty regions. So these regions are used to prevent the heap from getting too full, which can help reduce the likelihood of out of memory error. So some of you, I mean, most of us will tell that when I'm running a test, I, I'm getting out of memory errors, right? So to avoid that, that you can increase or decrease uh, uh, the GC one reserve percent uh, and to maintain a consistent performance. So why to reserve memory? So when you have spare, spare regions, uh, which allows G1 GC, G1 garbage collection to move live objects around more efficiently during its collection phases, which will improve the performance automatically. And then the next one, which is the heap. So, so far we saw about the garbage collection, which is completely related to the memory. And now uh, this is another set of memory, the JVM memory setting. So this is into the heap. So heap is where the JVM stores the data, uh, stores object data. So JMeter uses Java objects to simulate user actions, manage test plans, collect results, and perform any other tasks. So if JMeter heap is too small, it can run out of memory when processing large test plans or handling many users. So if it's too large, garbage collection may become inefficient. So you have to optimize it. So you should not keep it very less or you, cannot, you should not keep it uh, very in a higher um, or in a, in a too large, right? So to make it more, to make it inefficient. So the X message one G, that's the very first part. So this sets the initial heap size to one gigabyte. Yes, you are here it right. That's that's the initial heap size to one gigabyte. So the initial heap size is the amount of memory that JVM allocates to JMeter when it starts. So it prevents the JVM from needing to frequently grow the heap, which can cause passes. So why one GB? Why one gig? This value strikes a balance and it is enough to handle moderate test, load, test loads without requiring more memory than necessary at startup. So for larger test plans, this value might need to be increased. So if you're someone who wants to run a bigger, bigger test, bigger load test, you have to increase this part. 
and then the next one which is the xm x1g so this sets the maximum heap size to one gigabyte so the maximum heap size is the upper limit for how much memory the jvm can allocate so if jmeter needs more memory than this it will throw an out of memory error and possibly crash so why one gig again here so for light to moderate test loads one gig is generally enough but this value can be adjusted based on your system's resources and test requirements. So for more intense tests, you can increase this value to two gig or four gig, uh, that might be necessary for that. And then the last part, which is the max meta space size equal to 256 megabytes. So the meta space is an area separate from the heap where the JVM stores class metadata, and uh, which is Metadata, you mean, we all know that it's a data about data. So here it's information about loaded classes and methods. So limiting this size, limiting this metadata space size will help you to control how much memory is dedicated to class loading. So why should you limit to, you have the MS as one gig, you have the XMX as one gig. So why only the meta space to 256 MB? So for JMeter, the default is 256 MB, which is often enough as the number of classes loaded does not usually grow excessively. So if you are using a lot of plugins. If you're using a lot of plugins, let me again underline that. If you're using a lot of plugins or libraries, you might need to increase this value too. You can even increase to one gig or to uh, five to MB. So why setting these matters? So we all know uh, garbage, collector, uh, garbage collector, so by using G1 GC with a maximum pass time of 100 milliseconds, the JVM can ensure you have a smoother operation with fewer longer, few fewer long passes, which is essential for maintaining accurate performance testing results. And the 20% heap reservation, the default one will help prevent issues like heap exhaustion, which can degrade performance or crash JMeter during load, high load scenarios. And then the second part, which is the heap one. So setting the heap size will ensure that JMeter has enough memory to handle large data plans and many uses without running out of memory. And that's a more critical one. Whenever we run the load test, we do not want the test to get stopped in the middle of the execution, which will entirely <laughs> break everyone's mindset. And then uh, the 1 GB initial and maximum heap sizes provide a good start, provide a good starting point. But these can be tuned for larger test cases because the 256 MB meta space ensures that the class metadata is efficiently managed without over consuming the memory. Yep, I think we have just completed this part. We again have a lot of things to discuss. We'll discuss that in a separate video. I think it's, it's going beyond what we have planned. So for now, we have installed the JMeter and then you can start your JMeter testing. And then uh, if you want to understand what the other lines does, the set local and then the next uh, uh, lines from here, we can see that and then uh, in fact one more thing which i want to tell you so if you are not getting your test running open the environment variables and go to the environment variables here and make sure in your path you are having your java setup so if you see here i have the java path set up in the environment variables so i just have a multiple uh, yeah here i have my java so just make sure you have your java jdk 21 installed in your machine and it is referenced in the environment variable only then you will be able to connect your jmeter only then you will be able to open your jmeter in your machine uh, so yeah that's another important thing so with that i come to an end of this video and we'll uh, learn more please do connect with me subscribe to my channel join my channel for more exclusive content and more training uh, training contents you'll get access to uh, in the future and um, with that, I come to an end, and I definitely believe this video will be very useful to you. So until I meet you in my next video, it's bye-bye from Asin Shanmugam and your favorite little side channel. Take care and bye-bye.